Hello everyone, I'm back. This is Greg showing um, part two of Silverlight 4 Basics. Um, this is my first tutorial but second part. Um, if you'll recall last time we did mostly everything in XAML. Um, we really just kind of perused the way things um, kind of get set up within Visual Studio. Um, you'll notice here I still have my first YouTube um, project or solution open. We have the Silverlight application up here and the web applica ASP web application that will be hosting the Silverlight application is right here. And within your ASPX file you'll notice that it will reference, just to recap all of this, a object ta um, tag which references a first YouTube zap file which gets create on first, created on first build which is actually right here. So I just wanted to recap where we were. Um, as you'll notice, the first thing that actually is within your grid view here, or right, within your user control, um, actually that brings up a very good point. Silverlight, even though you may have heard of uh, user controls in other, um, other um, applications or other projects um, like WPF, uh, regular C Sharp, like Windows Forms, other things you'll know you'll know that user controls are usually something that's static that gets used over and over and over again and you reference it within a, another solu another another project okay um, in this case all silverlight is always within a user control so you'll notice that there's a user control whoops, a user control tag here that has a whole bunch of stuff here that we'll go over in another uh, tutorial you really don't need to know that much about it um, until you go into more uh, complicated stuff, but um, the uh, the main thing that you might want to know about right here is uh, this is actually right here is referencing the design um, height and width, which is actually what gets encompassed. The the grid actually gets encompassed within. Okay, um, you'll also notice that if you're a WPF fan, um, same it's the same concept, but uh, layout root, the name, is not set within WPF. So just as a heads up, if you hear somebody use you know the term layout root within a uh, tutorial, namely me, uh, that is what I'm talking about, or what other people are talking about, is the initial grid that everybody uses. Um, a lot of people change that. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I wouldn't recommend changing it up front, only because if people use it in a tutorial where they just make a default um, Silverlight application, they don't do a lot of changing. They just want to show you a lot of things. Um, they'll use leave this, and then they'll use that as a reference point of within your layout route. You can put such and such. Okay, so I would recommend leaving layout route there. I may have talked about it in the last tutorial. I don't remember, but. We're three minutes into the tutorial, so let's get looking. So, off to your left here, you'll notice that there's a uh, toolbar. Okay, this has all the different controls that Silverlight comes with default with your SDK toolkit. Um, there's a lot in here, and we will not go through all of them. I'm just going to go through some of them, and in other tutorials, I will pinpoint certain ones like the data grid. Um, there'll be stuff about stack panel, uh, certain one about tab control. Um, autocomplete box is a big one that's that a lot of people have problems with it and uh, it's 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 it can get complicated um, basically what the autocomplete box does is it's a text box that allows you to set parameters and within that um, those parameters or variables are names or dictionaries or whatever what have you and you will um, autofill based on what the user is typing based on your little dictionary so that's another one that people have problems with that I'm sure I'll be doing a specific tutorial just on that. Um, you also can right click on the toolbox and do an add tab and create your own tab and then choose items. And you can browse for other people's DLLs that you might find on the net or specific ones that you'll find. Um, one thing, one of them that I'll recommend is uh, Liquid. Uh, it's made by I believe Vector. Um, and his name is Dan. You can just look up Liquid Silverlight and it'll come up. Um, but he's done Silverlight 3 and Silverlight 4 and he's got a lot of different message boxes and dialog boxes that have very pretty effects right out of the box. You really can customize yourself. He gives you the source code and everything. 
So anyway, so to get started here, I'm going to actually just throw a label onto the grid. Um, <clears throat> throw a, let's see, a text box onto the grid. And I'm going to throw a button onto the grid. Okay. So we've got the, all this right here. So you'll notice down here, everything got put within the grid because that's where I dropped it, right? Uh, one thing you'll notice here is the name value. Uh, one thing I would recommend for everybody to do is get rid of the one because it's not it doesn't help you at all and name it something that you want it something that's gonna make sense to you okay and then at the end of that I would give it the capitalize the first letter and give it the name of what the property or the um, the object is okay um, so what I'm gonna do here is um, let's see, name, okay, label, and I'm going to make this text box be, uh, let's see, um, input text box. Okay, so that's done. So we do control S, just so you know, whenever something isn't saved, there's a, there's a little asterisk, just like everything else in Microsoft. So if you do Control S or you can do File and Save, it'll save your uh, that file that you're currently on. So you might be like, well, what is this? Well, if you notice here on any of these XAML files, and when you create new ones too, um, there's a little arrow next to it. Underneath it, it actually your XAML file also references what they call a code behind file. This code behind file is. Um, has an extension of .cs and it's .xaml.cs but the actual extension is CS for C sharp it would be .vb yes if it was Visual Basic I tend to do C sharp stuff so you're gonna see all .cs in my uh, tutorials but you can very well do pretty much everything I do in Visual Basic so <clears throat> To, move, to start this off, you're going to notice that first of all, and I'm, I'm assuming that you have some kind of generic um, understanding of uh, programming. I'll probably do other um, tutorials on programming itself, but I'm assuming that you understand that with this class right here, that main page is being uh, used as the class, which means makes it the main class and this colon user control means that it is inheriting from the class user control which that actually holds pretty much everything within um, uh, within this toolbox for, to give it give you some some example um, everything within there and everything about it is within user control that class okay and if you wanted to actually sit there and run through it learn through it you can right click here and if you do go down to go to definition you'll notice that this took you to the definition of user control and you can whittle away at this forever and there'll be plenty of stuff that you can go through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of that there's no reason to continue with that and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start um, by showing you the the nicety, um, nicety I guess that's not really a word but the niceness um, of Silverlight or actually Visual Studio really is IntelliSense. Um, you'll notice that I used um, the name for that text box is input text box, right? If I start typing input, oops, input text box, you'll see right there. Look at that. Finished it for me. Now obviously it wants some more information. So if I do dot, which means that I want to access a property that is within input text box, okay we can do text and then equals double quote because you're going to start a string because you'll notice that if you hover over this it, it actually says string text box dot text so that's telling you that what it's assuming you're going to equal it to is some kind of string if you were to do I don't know if you were to make an int equal to int of x okay you could not make this equal to x it will give you an error that says it can't complicitly, implicitly convert type into string, which means that it sees that this is an int. Okay. Now there are ways around that. You can um, what they do what they call casting and cast it to a string, which we'll go over in detail in another tutorial. But for now, we're just going to use a string. So we're going to say hello, everyone. I'm great. 
Okay. Now in this case, we're actually the input was a bad name. We're not going to actually input any information. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how from the design view you can actually get it to start your um, your button click method and use that within the code. So if you double click on this button right here, what this is going to do is it's going to fire off events. Okay, and you can do it from two places. One is double clicking here. The other one is when you click on it, you have a properties view. And if you click on events, you'll notice that you have a whole bunch of events here you can work off of. Mouse left down button, mouse left button up. There's a whole bunch. But if you double click, click here, or I can click, or you double click here, either one will do the same thing. It's going to create this little method for you. Okay? Now I'm at 10 minutes and 51 seconds. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get used to this whole um, fast paced uh, talking and I, I don't think I'm doing that great of a job yet but if you if you wait with me you'll uh, you'll get the you'll get there or we'll I'll get there um, so one thing I just want to show you real quick here is that when you double click this not only okay you might have already seen it not only does it make this method for you okay but it also fills it in here so that you um, can reference within the properties and you'll notice also that within XAML lo and behold click is equal to button one click okay now what it did was it actually auto filled the the before the cl underscore click it auto filled that with the name and that will happen whatever you call this that is what it's going to put here so you might want to name it something more um, more meaningful than button one obviously before you do, do that double click to, to um, access it. So now what this is going to do is this is going to um, allow me okay you got private void and remember if you remember from programming classes or what, what not void means that you do not have to return a value and button one click is the actual method we're using we're passing object sender which means we are passing the button information and putting it into sender and we are routing event args into e okay and I'll go over this probably at some other tutorial because obviously I'm running out of time um, but what I wanted to show you was now if I do input text box dot text okay we can do um, hello everyone I'm Awesome, like, suppose. Okay, and I don't know if you know suppose, but that's a, um, it might be suppose a, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but um, there's a nice little YouTube, I'm awesome. I actually happen to really like that, uh, that video, so you'll see me reference that quite a bit, I'm sure. So I just saved that, and I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to hit F5, and you're going to notice a couple things. Bear with me here guys, it's starting up, I promise. Okay, so, we're going to notice that there's a little, you can't really, um, uh, I didn't make it wide enough, but you see the gist of it. So, hello everyone, I'm great. So, you can see that it grabbed, it went to the public main page, which is what they call the constructor. Okay, and within that constructor, we can get rid of it. Well, it's not going to let me now, but uh, within the constructor, it went through a whole initialized component method, which we'll go over at a, way deeper in other tutorials. And we, after that, it let, it set the text property of input text box, which is inherited. It inherits the text box object um, properties, and it set that value to "Hello, everyone. I'm great." Now what we're going to do is we're going to hit that button and lo and behold, look at that. Hello everyone, I'm awesome like Spose. There you go. Alright guys, so that's going to be the, first, the um, beginning of that tutorial. Next tutorial I'm going to do is going to be based on breakpoints um, and how to use breakpoints to your advantage. Thank you and I hope to see you on the next tutorial.